Okay, my name is Jerry Franklin and I'm a professor in the College of Forest Resources at the University of Washington in Seattle. Jerry, uh, what do you suppose you'll take away from this encounter with the mountain, um, this recovering landscape, these people that will, uh, that may inform what you do back home? Well, I'll, I'll, I will take away a variety of things uh, from this session that we've had here on the mountain. And I think, you know, from the standpoint of, of the ecology, the biology, the natural history, <coughs> I think the really important uh, thing for me always when I come to the mountain is I take away something new. And for, for me, uh, this visit has particularly emphasized the incredible uh, richness of, of this place. Uh, because of the tremendous variety in terms of of disturbances and recovery processes that have occurred here. And particularly, I've come to appreciate how valuable these large, slowly regenerating disturbed areas are. And, you know, this is the most biologically diverse landscape that you could possibly have here. Uh, it's, it's, it's very rich in a whole array of organisms. And in fact, this is a much more diverse landscape biologically than the old growth forests that I love so much were, uh, and presumably will be again at some time. And so one of the things I'm beginning to think about this landscape is the, the wonder of it is not the recovery process, the rapidity of the recovery process, but the real wonder of this landscape now is what it is and what it will be for many decades, which is this incredibly a rich array of plants and animals that are present here. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's a different lesson for me. And it's, it's, it, I was moving that direction, but it really, you know, puts an exclamation mark. These kinds of areas with their diverse plant life forms are just absolutely regional hot spots of biological diversity, of birds, of butterflies, of reptiles, of amphibians. And, you know, we, we need to value them rather than be anxious that somehow they get back to what they were previously. We need to, we need to uh, cherish them for what they are now. And we need to understand the importance of having areas like this uh, throughout the region, rather than trying to immediately return them to some previous state. We need to let them be what they are because they bring us such value. So that's, that's the, the ecological lesson for me. And it's also a human lesson because it, it, it informs, you know, how we should be thinking about them and what we should be doing. And so the notion that, you know, when nature brings a disturbance, a big fire, a big windstorm, or a volcanic eruption, we need to think carefully before we rush in and salvage it and replant it with trees to rush it back to a closed forest again. So, is that useful? this landscape can inform how we treat other landscapes or think about them and, and react to what we see as a catastrophe. Do you hear the coyotes? <laughs> <That's a laughs> uh, yes, this, this landscape unquestionably informs us about how we should be thinking about managing other parts of our landscape, and particularly other parts of our federal estate. That, you know, uh, in an era when, when we were focused on wood production, and that was really, there were, for good reasons, we were focused on that as a society and as resource managers. You know, the notion that, oh gosh, uh, you know, we've had a fire, we need to reforest this right away. Uh, this doesn't apply anymore because these federal landscapes 
are our treasure house of biological diversity. And we need places like this, and we need to allow them their time to exist rather than trying to truncate it. So it very much informs us about how to think about natural disturbances, particularly in a place like, like a national forest. I love those coyotes. I love them. <laughs> Not incidentally, the, the coyotes are, are emblematic of this because, because there's such a diversity of animal life here, small mammals, birds, uh, reptiles. Uh, we have a tremendous richness of mesopredators, medium-sized predators like the coyote, for example, uh, like the raccoon. Uh, uh, so, you know, uh, it's just, it's just uh, um, an incredibly rich uh, place in terms of both the numbers of species and the populations of those species. Marvelous. People are describing this as a resilient landscape. It's almost become a tagline does that, that word resilient, does that seem to apply to you here? Uh, it has been described as a resilient landscape, and in many senses it has. You know, it's bouncing back. It's, and, I, and I've been amazed at how just in the last few years the rate at which it's greened up has accelerated. So that most of the blast zone now is, is a green place. And, uh, the, the logs lying on the ground are now fading into the vegetation. Actually, the vegetation is growing up around and we're, we can't see them anymore, but it feels like they're sinking into the green uh, mass. Um, but, you know, resilient it puts too much emphasis on a recovery process, uh, getting back to some previous condition. And so, you know, yes, it's a resilient landscape. And a lot, of, uh, a lot of, of things are returning here. A lot of things are developing. Uh, but the, the important part of this is not that it's quickly going to get back to a closed forest, but that, in fact, uh, it's resilient. It's recovered to the point where it's now become this incredibly rich landscape, diverse in, in plant life form and animal species, uh, and, uh, so very much resilient, uh, and uh, again, you know, I'd emphasize we need to let it take its time. Uh, we need to enjoy and uh, relish uh, this rich, diverse period uh, rather than try to terminate it. And so, yes, resilient in terms of coming back to uh, a landscape which is incredibly rich, and rich in uh, experiences for us. Uh, so, yes, it is a resilient landscape. That does not imply uh, that it's going to quickly come back to the, the, the forest, forested condition it was, and that's a good thing. This, uh continuing uh, program of bringing writers and artists and scientists together in, in uh, rich places. Is that something you think is valuable? I, I, th I think it's extremely valuable to bring uh, various kinds of artists, writers, painters, poets, singers, musicians, uh, together with scientists. Uh, I believe in a lot, there's a lot of value in that kind of dialogue for both sides. Um, and, you know, more broadly, uh, interactions between the social sciences and the natural sciences, is re it's really critical. Um, you know, this is a, a, a planet that's dominated by the human species. And so humans are going to make all the important decisions about what we do, how we treat this land. And uh, I tell my students all the time that forestry is, before anything else, a social science. 
Well, that being the case, then, we'd better have a really sustained and meaningful dialogue between the social sciences and the natural sciences and between the resource managers and society. So uh, it's, it's needed, it's imperative, it can only lead to good things.